Well, looking for some of the solar camping lights on eBay, I came across this one that seems very common. It's not solar powered, but it is apparently rechargeable. And it does come with a sort of USB to jack lead. Now, some of the other stuff comes with the uh, built-in charger and the plug, but uh, this one didn't. This one just came with a standard sort of USB lead to uh, the jack, so I'm guessing there is some sort of current regulation circuitry inside. And it comes as standard with a sort of universal AAA hold battery holder, which uh, I fitted uh, alkalines and I'm guessing that given that it's rechargeable that it would be better putting nickel metal hydrides in. But if it, this is a standard lithium charger, which I think it is, because it's designed to take an 18650 cell as well, then that wouldn't charge uh, nickel metal hydride cells too well. It would charge them up to a certain degree and then it would cut out probably too early. It has... Um, three settings. I don't know how this is going to show up. It's not going to show up too well. I've already discovered, because it comes off a wee bit too easily, that this comes off. So let's see if that shows up better. Yep, OK. So the first mode, uh, when you click the button once, five LEDs light and it draws about 150 milliamps. So about 30 milliamps per LED. Click it again. It goes up to about half an amp for 17 LEDs. That's the ring of 12 and the five. And that, uh, again, gives about 30 milliamps. But then when you go up to the next setting and it lights uh, the outer set, which uh, is a total of uh, 25, 18, 12 and 5 to give 60 LEDs. When it goes up to uh, the full intensity, it draws about an amp, which uh, equates to about, oh, was that about 15 or 16 milliamps per LED? So the seller this came from, it was a generic eBay seller. There's so many of them selling the same thing. They sold uh, 12, 36 and 60 LED versions. Uh, this particular seller was Tiziel Drive, T-I-Z-I-E-L Drive. But they are available, you know that usual thing, you look at an eBay listing and it, it puts lots of other similar listings and there are a lot of uh, similar listings. So let's investigate the circuitry a little bit in here. The LEDs are all wired in parallel. Uh, so I'm guessing if there is a resistor, which often in these products there isn't, they're, you, particularly given the current they're pushing it at, I'd guess they may be relying just on circuit impedance. Let's take a, let's take this uh, back thing off, this hanger, just because it's getting away. And we'll take the battery pack out at the same time, so I don't short anything out. So let's see what uh, circuitry it's got. There's one central screw holding the LEDs in. And it is just a parallel array of LEDs. Uh, the, uh, the straw hat LEDs. I see in this there's a little indent, uh, a little stem. Oh, that goes with that indent there. It's to line them up. Yeah, when that lines up, it just drops straight in. OK, let's take a look at the circuit board and see if it does have charge protection circuitry on it. Which, for some reason, I doubt, because so much so much of this stuff just doesn't have that. So what we got? We've got a ubiquitous little 8-pin chip. Well, shall I zoom up on this? I shall zoom up on it. Uh, I'll try and remember. I'll zoom up, and then I will try and actually keep in shot. I've just focused on that. I've got a small screen here. I don't know if it's 100% focused. Uh, I got caught out with the circuit breaker one when it didn't quite focus. That was annoying. So we've got the battery supply coming up. It loops straight out to the LEDs, the common. It goes through this diode for polarity protection to this chip. The chip doesn't seem to have anything in the way of markings on it. It's got three transistors. And it looks as if it's got a resistor power transistor, but I don't see any charge protection circuitry. Um, the negative from the battery is going straight to the little jack in the back. So uh, there is no charge protection circuitry. It really is just the jack. The charging jack is going straight out, uh, straight to the lithium cell so that you'd have to use a protected cell to avoid overcharging 
on the five volts. And also, I don't think there's any current limiting other than the actual, the lead itself. But that seems to be a common thing. They rely on the resistance and the contact resistance to limit the current, which isn't necessarily a good thing. That's fundamentally it. It's the, the little control chip, the click switch in the back, going straight to the chip into that pin there, pin two. It's almost like a pick microcontroller, or, you know, so many of the little eight pin chips use the same layout, that they've got the two power pins going in pins one and eight, and then the rest are just general I.O. pins. There's really not a lot to say about this, is there? So, uh, zooming back out, it's fairly generic. It's what you'd expect at the price range. I'm guessing that the main difference between the other varieties of different numbers of LEDs is probably the number of holes drilled in the faceplate and the number of LEDs populated this on this circuit board, unless they've got different circuit boards per version. Um, there is no protection, so ultimately if you get one of these, then keep in mind that when you plug it, if you plug it into a USB port, it could draw quite a lot of current, and if you just put a standard 18650 in here, it would attempt to charge up to 5 volts, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So protected cells are, are a must in that instance. Um, and that's fundamentally it. It's a very basic, cheapo, simple design with three ordinary looking transistors and a base resistor per uh, transistor and that's really it, not really much else to say. It's usable but it's not exactly what you call a top of the range model.